Good evening. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just drinking some uh, juice. So let's say you're an animator, right? Just graduated from college and you got your first job at a small studio. Your first job is simple. Create a photorealistic render of a character, drink it from a glass. For those of you who don't know what a render is, it's essentially the process of turning the information of a 3D image into 2D. Observe here, we have our three main items, a model, lighting, and a camera. Models are our objects in the scene. They can range from furniture to CDs to characters. Every tangible thing in the scene is a 3D model. Lighting is what allows the final render to appear, well, bright. It allows us to create convincing shadows and set up the mood for the scene. And finally, the camera, which controls what we can see and when we can see it. Just like lighting, it's self-explanatory and works just the same as a camera in real life filming would. All these components make up a scene, the canvas of a render. Now that we know what a render is, it's time to go back to our animator. So we need to make a character drink from a glass. Simple enough, right? Just add our character, add our glass, then a camera, and some lighting, and we're done. But wait, something looks odd, doesn't it? The glass looks almost not real, but why? See, subconsciously our eyes have developed an understanding of what is real, and we can tell when something looks out of place. This is usually referred to as the uncanny valley. This is where the uncanny valley comes in. It's really hard to identify what exactly is off here, but our brain, after millions of years of evolving to identify faces, can identify that something is off there. See, when someone creates a 3D render, be it a video game or a movie, they must usually pick an art style to work around with. They can go for a more stylized or cartoony look, maybe mix it up with some realism, but maintaining its charm, or fully going the opposite way, looking to make a render as realistic as possible. This is especially tough for artists that seek photorealism in their work as they have to worry about how our skin pores work, the little imperfections on surfaces, and what we'll discuss today, how light works. More specifically, ray tracing. You can tell this glass is real because your eyes subconsciously notice many things about it. Let me explain. This is a glass I just drank out of. For starters, notice all the imperfections of the glass surface, like the fingerprints, the smudges, or the leftover liquid. Notice how it looks when light hits it. As you should know from 7th grade physics, light can behave differently depending on the surface it hits. It could reflect, refract, be absorbed and diffract and many other complicated terms. The point is, your eyes notice them, which is why realistic lighting is such a complicated deal to achieve. Throughout 3D rendering history, there have been many methods to achieve real-time lighting, the most popular one being rasterization. The difference between rasterization and ray tracing is pretty simple. In rasterization, what we're doing is we're taking a grid and we're kind of throwing objects at that grid of pixels. and for each object, we basically look at each pixel that that object covers and says, well, is the object closer in this point or not? And if it is closer, we save it. If not, then we discard. Still, making something look good with restoration is still graphically demanding, and it's complicated enough to create an environment that looks convincing enough to not fall into the uncanny valley. However, it being complicated does not mean it's impossible. This is Halo 3, originally released in 2007. It might not be the most realistic, but you can see they did the best they could with the technology at the time to create a soothing and pleasing image. Notice how the light of the sun hits the walls here. How a ray of light passes through this hole in the ceiling. Even my player model, the scratches and little surface imperfections help to add detail. You can definitely tell it's not real, but it doesn't look bad at all. Even for a 2007 release, it still holds up great. Needless to say, this proves that when there's a wheel, there's a way. Fast forward to 2018, and some developers found the whale, and the way. Before we go on, how do we get here? What even is a ray tracing? 
Well, as the name suggests, ray tracing is a lighting technique that has seen more light in recent years than ever before. Mainly due to the aforementioned RTX line of graphics cards, but before we dive in, we have to get technical. Historically, ray tracing truly began with Arthur Apple, when in 1964 he wrote a paper on ray tracing titled Some Techniques for Shading Machine Rendering of Solids. Arthur used a computer for ray tracing to generate shaded images. Essentially, he determined the closest surface to each angle point, and then how said rays would bounce off to determine which spot should be shaded or not. And as time went on, ray tracing evolved into what we know of today. Now, computers can emulate how real life lighting behaves and reacts against different surfaces in real time. This is great and all, but there's a problem. Now, let's turn ray tracing on. Huh. Yes, ray tracing comes at the cost of performance. Computer graphics cards until now have been adapted mainly to restoration under similar, less demanding lighting methods. So, even though my graphics card is amazing, it cannot handle ray tracing that well at all, but that's where Nvidia comes in with their RTX line of GPUs. For the first time ever, a graphics processing unit came in with a built-in dedicated controller for ray tracing. This is perhaps the greatest leap in tech we've seen in a decade. Minecraft is a great example for ray tracing. Though it is highly stylized, the game itself allows people to modify its visual aspects as much as they please, say, changing the texture or image of a certain block to be a picture of your choice. The game allows a lot of player expression, even outside the game itself. Back on topic, Minecraft is compatible with ray tracing, which can create renders that leave players truly in awe. Even if the results are subjective to how each person likes their game, it is still a testament to how amazing this technology can be, to the point that it can make a game with such a simple art style transition into a photorealistic environment, carefully crafted over tens of hours by an artist. Of course, there's a catch. For starters, performance. This game runs at a smooth frame rate, which means the image is clear and we can easily make out the motion. Turn ray tracing on, and the performance drop is massive, the image is stuttering, it takes longer for your eyes to process what they're seeing, and the motion just doesn't look good at all. Now, on the other hand, take a look at how this same software runs on an RDX card. A smooth, high frame rate is what we get. Of course, that's to be expected from such a powerful card, even if you remove the fact that this is a video game running in real time, ray tracing still makes a stunning difference in other mediums, take, for example, Toy Story. I love the original films, but even though I love them with all my heart for the amazing films they are, I have to admit that the lighting and animations were not the best. They still look amazing, but you can tell this was Pixar on early on in their life as a film studio. In this section we're going to be looking at a, a series of progression images, and these progression images are going to be showing us the shading and lighting. Um, how we build our shaders, the surfaces on the models, as well as how we build our lighting, lighting our environments, as well as lighting our characters. Really what we want to look at here is the color, the texture, and the emotion that all of this color and light add to our scenes. For a time, that's pretty good light, but what if artists go further? What if blood, sweat, tears and hours of time are spent evolving this tech. Well, in that case, we get Toy Story 4. This movie uses ray tracing as its lighting method, and the difference is simply astonishing. While it is indeed to be expected for this to occur in a 24 year leap, it is still just as breathtaking to compare the two. You can clearly see light bouncing off the wood on the floors, reflecting as a real floor wood. How light behaves and bounces differently from each character's model depending on the material it takes. How amazing the outdoor scenes look, it is simply wonderful to look at and appreciate this works hard. Even looking at the old movie, it still holds up amazingly, and it is quite inspiring to see how these talented animators go around technological limitations back in the day. Ray tracing truly is the dream of those who love photorealism, and want to create content comparable to real life, and each day we are coming closer to that goal. Perhaps we are even there now? Let an artist loosen a canvas with ray tracing, and he could create an image that is so real you wouldn't even know it's not a picture. To wrap this video up, I think it's important to remember that, like everything else used to render, ray tracing is a mere tool that, although amazing, only reaches its full potential in the hands of a talented artist. And likewise, it might not be the best solution in certain situations. But the fact still remains that ray tracing represents the dawn of a new era for all areas of technology. 
be it how we see a movie, how we design massive skyscrapers, or how we enjoy our games. Be it software or hybrid sided, we are witnessing the birth of a new era of digital art, and I cannot wait to see what new technologies might be brought by time.